All right, guys, welcome back to the uh, Wood Gas Fire Builders Workshop. So in the last video, we talked about the V3 housings, uh, how they're put together, how you can use the tools to keep them in round, get them ready. So now this step is I want to go through a dry fit and show you uh, basically how we would build up uh, the reactor components. So um, we've, got, we've got them uh, welded up. Now in this case for the video, I just have them tacked, but uh, you would normally have the full welds on the seams at this stage. So the first thing I'm gonna do in, is I made up some spacers at the bottom that I can put the plate on. So these are already cut to the size. So that way, when I lay in my base plate, my bottom plate for the reactor, it's gonna be set at the right height, which is two inches above the bottom, okay? So I've got that in there. So this would be the first step of the reactor. We would do, you could either do an inside weld or an outside weld, whichever your preference is, but you need to leak test that. So after that weld is in place, uh, what typically we'll do is flip this bottom over, uh, use some plumber's putty around the opening, and then fill that with water, a little uh, you know, quarter inch, half inch of water and let it sit. Uh, make sure that that weld is holding uh, and, and is not leaking, okay? Then the next step, once I've got the base plate down, um, I also want to weld, I want to weld the uh, 5 16 nuts on the inside of that because we're going to bolt that uh, cover plate on the bottom and we're going to have 5 16 uh, nuts that we're going to go through that bottom plate and screw into. So you want to have those uh, bolts or nuts welded onto that plate before you put this in place. Okay, so then the next step is once we've got that in, we can put in the reduction housing, okay? So we're gonna put that in, and we're gonna position that, line that up, so that everything is already pre-cut, so we can line up our holes. So now we can weld we can weld those in place so we can put a nice gas tight weld on the outside and we're also going to weld that on the inside but since this is cut at this height it's very easy to reach in here to weld. So we're going to do the same thing, we're going to have a nice gas tight weld on the outside and we're also going to weld this on the inside to the reduction housing. Once we have that in place now and we've leak tested that bottom plate then we can fill around the reduction housing, we can fill that with the high temperature insulation. We put that, once we get that tucked in place, and we can add the quarter inch choke mantle plate. And again, we want to go through and dry fit, make sure that your heights, these should all line up with the etching mark that's on the inside of this housing, okay? So you can get that in place. Then the next step is to add the air jacket. Now in this case, I've got an air jacket started, but it's not finished yet. I've got some of the half couplers for the air jets in. I don't have them have them all in. But the thing I wanted to show you on the air jet is in this V3 housing, we've got two auxiliary ports in the back. So what you have to do when you're placing this air jacket in, first off, you have to line up one of your uh, air jets with or from the ignition port. Okay, then you've got to center it. And then you've got a mark from where these auxiliary ports are going to go in, and you've got to cut holes. So like what we've done here, I've got the holes for the jets, but then I've also got two holes cut for the auxiliary ports to come through. So you've got to measure those, get those in place, and uh, get everything lined up. So the auxiliary ports, basically are here, we've got a half inch housing, half inch nipple, it's going to go through the back going to come through that hole. Let's see when I turn it a little bit, that housing. Okay, see ya. Okay, so this is going to be welded on the outside, and then this stainless steel coupler is going to be welded on the inside. So we've got two of those. But you want to position everything here first in your dry fit so you know where to cut those holes. Then the next step, once you have all that, your air jacket top plate is going to fit on top here. And it's going to sit there. Now, 
This is designed so that the top of the air jacket just hits at the bottom of this pyrolysis opening here. So now this whole section can be leak tested because once you've got the, the air jacket in place, you can put plugs into your, where your air jets go and you can put in your ignition port where the sight glass is going to be attached to. Now this whole piece, this whole lower section um, can be leak tested. So you can put plugs in there, put plugs in your auxiliary port, and then put a, 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 an air adapter on your ignition port, feed air into it, and then do a, basically a soap spray on your welds and uh, see if there's any leaks. You've got uh, the weld that's welded to the choke mantle, you've got the top of the uh, plate, and then you've got the outside weld. So you've got three welds there that you need to check. And at this stage, it's still open. If you have any leaks, you can still got access to it. You can fix any of those leaks that are in there. Okay, so then once we have this piece welded and tested, we can add the next layer, which is the pyrolysis layer. So now we're going to add the pyrolysis liner, which is going to sit on there. Now in the original design, we made another change here. He had two layers here. He had an inside liner and an outside liner, and he had a little thin layer for insulation. We've eliminated the outside insulation liner because we're going to insulate the whole thing. So this was redundant, and uh, it basically restricted the gas flow. So just having the one layer, one liner in the pyrolysis liner gives us a much bigger chamber to circulate the hot gas uh, for pyrolysis. So that's going to go in there. We're going to do the weld here, and we... We, at this point, we could, we could do a reservoir test if we wanted to put water in here, put some uh, putty across here, uh, weld on the inside or weld on the outside or both, whatever your preference is. Or we can just put the top of the tank on and go to the next layer. So now, at this stage, This is the opening here that's going to be for the heat exchange. We're going to put in our divider plate here, put our heat exchange here. So now we can weld this top on and everything should line up because in the previous video I showed you how to use the straps and the turnbuckle to make sure everything is round. So these two pieces liner should line up pretty good. So now we're going to weld the outside of this liner here as well. Then we can put in a paralysis top plate. Now in the original he uses pieces of the propane tank, so we're not doing any of that. We've got an actual uh, dedicated liner that's going to be on top of the paralysis, so that'll sit in there. I'm going to weld that up. We are going to leak test this as well, because now that we've got a second chamber, what we can do is uh, basically we can put a cover over this, put an air inlet here, tape this up, and put air in here. Now we can test the welds, the three welds for the paralysis layer. Then we're going to add the condensate liner. As I said, we've got good access. We can reach in here and put a good weld. We've got a nice ledge that we can weld to. So we're going to weld that up. The uh, condensate liner sits down a little bit to allow moisture to get over that to collect in the reservoir. And then lastly, we can put on our lid flange. Okay, so basically that's the dry fit. That's the dry fit on the reactor piece. So you're going to do bottom plate leak test. You're going to add the reduction housing, insulate it, put the uh, choke mantle, leak test it, add the air jacket, the liner, leak test it, add the pyrolysis liner, leak test it, add the condensate uh, liner, leak tested. Now the top, it's not sealed, so the top uh, condensate's got to be tested with a water. So just do a water reservoir, put water in there just like it was designed to do. And as long as it's holding water, you should be good to go. Um, so from there, 
Basically, that's the reactor structure. S is, this is the most critical part of your build. So you want to spend a lot of time on this. You want to spend a lot of time on all these leak tests. If there's any leaks in here, uh, this is where you're going to end up with a 600 pound paperweight. So you want to make sure before moving on to the next layer as you're coming up that each of those welds is good, solid, gas tight, airtight, um, and you want to leak test it as you're coming up because you can't come back in later uh, if there's a leak in one of these internal welds. Okay, uh, so there we go. That's the dry fit on the reactor part. Uh, now we'll, we'll uh, go ahead and do the filter. All right, good luck on your build, and we'll see you on the next one.